This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which has a collection of well-written crafted courses for software developers. From Python to front-end to system design to scalability, learning at Educative is really powerful because they have all coding workspaces in the browser itself. And also they offer Educative for Limited, in which you pay only once for all the courses. They have annual and monthly plans. And my audience gets a 10% additional discount on using the coupon Rachid. And you can have the link in the description below. Now, if I try to insert 10, now things will again become interesting. 10, it goes here, performs, oops, it's break, again it breaks, and now the level of the tree has increased. Welcome to another video in our system design playlist series in which we pick topics one by one and decode them. The topic for today will be B trees. Now, so far we are trying to really dig deep into how databases work internally, how they handle the reads, how they handle the writes, and how they handle the crash scenarios. What we have discussed so far are basically indexing structures which we are using or which database leverage to make the read queries faster. We discussed the indexing structures which were log structured based approach like LSM trees which is leveraged by Facebook's RocksDB. You can check the video in the series to understand how they work. But today we are going to start with B trees, which are page oriented indexing structures. So these are widely used in relational databases and they originally started coming into picture in 1970s. Again, like LSM trees, they also store key value pairs and the keys are sorted. But in LSM trees, you remember that we were writing to hard disk in variable size segments. There was a compaction algorithm going on in the background which was taking a lot of segments and then compacting them, taking care that all the duplicate keys are compressed into one single key in the final segment. And it was doing that compaction kind of thing. The segment size or the disk space size per segment was close to 10 MB or something. It can be variable, but it was in order of MB. The other good thing was that the writes were sequential when we were talking about the log structured based indexing structures. Now B trees are different. Why? Because in B trees, you are talking in terms of fixed size blocks or pages. Each is having a size of, you can say close to four kilobytes. Okay. Now you have to make sure that you read or write one page at a time. You remember that in B trees, which are being leveraged in databases, you always read or write one page at a time. Okay. So even if you have to change a few bytes in one page, the entire page needs to be overwritten. So these are not sequential writes. So remember that, okay? Because sequential writes are very fast on hard disks, that's why the LSM trees were re having really good write throughput. The B trees are not that fast when you're talking about writes. And we will come to the analysis and difference between LSM trees and B trees later on in this video. So each page also has an address. And how do B trees look? It's basically kind of a binary tree, but it is having more than two branches. So just to give you an example, you can see that the root page, it's a page first of all. So this is in memory, it has an address. Okay. This is not kind of an in memory database that you're talking about. This is B tree. It is having a lot of branches from every node, but the important thing to note is Every node is a page and it resides in physical memory, the hard disk, not in just RAM. Okay. So the root node can have lot of children and you can see that the keys over here are stored in ascending order. So let's say the root node is having 10, 30, 50 and 100. Besides every key, there are two pointers which are pointing to another pages. So this one is pointing to a page which will have all keys which are less than 10. Okay. And over here, you will see that the next pointer to 10 is having a page which has all the keys which are in the range greater than or equal to 10, but less than 30, which is the next key. So in this fashion, you have distribution of your keys across different pages and you are storing the references to each of them besides every key. And the keys are helping us decide what are the range of the keys present in the next pointer page. So similarly over here for 50, you can see that you have this pointer. It is pointing to this page and it has a range greater than or equal to 30 and less than 50. Similarly for 100, we also have here one pointer which is pointing to some page 
which will store keys which are greater than or equal to 100 and there is no upper bound. So now you have this kind of a tree structure and there are few properties of B trees. You can see that there are in this particular diagram there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 branches per node. So the branching factor for this B tree is 5. If the branching factor is 5, you can say that the number of keys stored in a node will be 4. Another property of B trees is they are self balancing in nature and all the leaf nodes they will be at same level. So that's why it is always a balanced tree. It is not skewed. The leaf nodes are having the keys and the values. These can be values or it can be pointer to another hard disk location where the value resides. So it depends on the implementation. Now if you want to perform a lookup for let's say key 39. So you will go to the root node and you will say that okay 39 resides between 30 and 50. So I will follow this particular pointer and access a new page. So this is then read from the hard disk. It's not there in memory. Okay. You read this value. You perform another disk IO operation in which you read this page. And then over here you see that okay 39 resides between 37 and 42. So you need to again traverse one more page from the disk. So you do that again from the physical disk space. You are reading more pages in this fashion. You are doing these hops based on the lookup key, what range would it lie in and what is the pointer. You go and traverse that and you keep on reading more and more pages this way until you reach the leaf node, which is this one. Now for 39, you have you can see that you can see this key and the value is over here and you can simply return this value if the value is stored in the leaf nodes. If however, this is again a pointer, you again need to make one more disk operation like you read again from the disk and you basically read the value and return that. Okay. So why do we need this? What is the benefit of all this? Well, the benefit is that if let's say you are having a million keys, okay, you are having a million data set, million entries in your table. And if I want to look up the key 39, either if you don't perform any indexing, you either scan all the entire rows, right? And then you match the keys and you return it. So that's very slow and one row can be very huge. So you need to read every row and that will be a lot of disk IO operations involved. So you need some indexing, right? And the benefit of B trees is that they are balanced and this depth that we are talking about, because whenever you are traversing a new level in B tree, you need to again read one more block or one more page from the disk. So the idea behind B trees is to minimize this. So the depth of the binary trees in practice is generally three to four. And the branching factor is not just three, four or five. It's in hundreds. Generally, if you have a branching factor of 500 and you have a depth of four, you can store up to 256 terabytes of data. Okay. So that's huge. So this means that for 256 terabytes of data, when you want to perform a read on some key, at max, you read the root node and then there are four levels, right? So four disk IO operations. And if then again, the leaf node is having pointers to the value, then one more read to read the value, right? So, but you can imagine from like 256 terabytes of data, so many like keys are there and you are simply doing a few reads by having this indexing structure. And also this self indexing structure, it is automated, right? You do not have to create these indexes yourself. The algorithm as the data continues to grow in the database, the height and the structure of this B tree keeps on changing to maintain the balanced nature and minimize the height of the tree. So let's take an example and understand how the insertion works. So let's say you are having this kind of structure in which the leaf node is 37, then the value 38 value, the key 39 and value 40 and the value and 41 and value. And this is the parent node. So you can see that we have pointers everywhere. All the values over here are in between 37 and 48 and hence this pointer exists from this reference node to this page. Now let's say I want to insert 42. So this will go between 37 and 48 and we get like an insertion over here, but it is basically growing beyond the page size. So you have to split this page into two. So basically 37, 38, 39, you can make it like this and 40, 41 and 42 they can come over here and the remaining page size it's like half full right now so it's free it can handle more writes in future 
Similarly, this other page which is created is again half full and there is empty space to accommodate future writes. Now you also need to change the parent page. So over here you can see that 31, 37, 48, 40 gets inserted in between and you change the pointers between 37 and 40 to the left page and the 40 and 48 are having a reference to the right page. So in this fashion, it always maintains this balanced kind of nature it has and the height as I'm saying for 500 branching factor can be like close to three or four. Okay. So this was a rough overview of how insertion works. Deletion is again something in which the opposite of this happens. For deletion, you will probably need to see if uh, you need to merge nodes and remove some free space. All those things happen. I'm not going to go into that, but I just want to give you an idea of how B-trees work. So how writes work? Well, you have to first find the leaf page in which you have to do the insertion or do the updation. To find the leaf node, you start from the root page and then based on what range the key lies in, you perform the traverse or you perform the hops to different pages. So each page reading is a disk I operation as I have mentioned. And then finally you reach to the leaf node and you edit the data and you overwrite the page, not just, basically it's a page, it's having certain four kilobyte size, right? You overwrite the entire page. The address of that page does not change. So in that case, you do not need to update any parent page pointer. However, in this case, if there is a split operation coming into play, at that point of time, you need to overwrite two pages. So this is another page, this is another page. And then you also need to overwrite the parent page because you need to update the pointers. So three pages. So a little bit additional cost that we have on writes. And what happens if the database crashes in between? Okay, because you have a lot of operations which are happening and it might happen that the database crashes in between. So to avoid this corrupt index state, what we do is we, perf we store a write ahead log. And this WAL, it's very widely used. Even if you talk about SQLite or MySQL, they have these configurations in which you can specify we want to use the write ahead block mode. And what this is, it's an append only file and all the modifications that you are going to perform on the B tree, you first store that to this write ahead log. So in this way, even if the crash happens, this WAL, can be used as a source of truth and it helps in our recovery. So I hope we are clear with how the writes and reads are working in B-trees. Now we want to talk about how are they different from LSM trees, right? So B-trees, you can think about something like MySQL. It is using the internal storage engine used as ImmunoDB, which is using B-trees. And LSM trees, you can think about something like LevelDB or Facebook's RocksDB. So we noticed that in LSM trees, writes was sequential, right? Which was always good with hard disks. However, in B trees, it involves writing to several pages and it's also overwriting. That's very important. It's not doing sequential writes. LSM trees, they compress better and they use smaller disk space. Why? Because in B trees, we have seen that fragmentation is there. You might have pages which are half empty, right? So you have redundant space in between nodes. So that's why B trees tend to take a lot more space than LSM trees. Now LSM trees, obviously they are not page oriented and therefore there is no fragmentation. We have compaction algorithms going on in the background, which take segments and then compact them into more segments. We have compaction running in the background, which take segment files and merge them together into one segment file. So the drawback, so at this point it might look like as LSM trees are really fast and they are very good, which is true in some cases, but there are also downsides to LSM trees. Let's understand them. Now compaction is something which is going on in the background, agreed, right? But this compaction, it's consuming the disk bandwidth, okay? And as the database grows, the compaction will take more time to create the new segment file because the database is growing, right? So the compaction will start to consume more and more disk bandwidth as your database grows in size. The machine was probably capable of, let's say, 100 writes per second. I'm just making up this number. But since compaction is taking 30 or 40 writes per second, for example, 
your production rights now can only use the 50 or 60 rights per second bandwidth okay so in some sense compaction is interfering with the disk bandwidth because of which the production rights may slow down okay the other problem is what if the write rate increases in lsm trees so if you have a lot of writes coming in the picture and let's say you're not throttling them which lsm trees do not then your compaction algorithm would be very slow so you will keep on creating more and more segment files however the compaction algorithm is running slow because the rate of writes is very high now these segment files which are being generated they are not really being compacted because they are the rate at which these files are being generated is very high as compared to the rate at which they are being compacted so after a certain time you might encounter or out of memory error on this machine which is using this approach however the b trees over here are better choice why because the keys will always be unique in b tree okay so even if you are having a lot of writes the lsm trees were not able to handle it because the keys can be present in multiple segment files but that's not the case with b trees each key always occurs one place in the index also the better thing is because of that nature you can easily give transactional support in b trees over certain range of keys because you know exactly where they are and you can attach logs to them next i want to talk about primary versus secondary indexes so far we have only discussed about indexing 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 so that's always kind of a primary index in which the key only occurs one time in the data set however we have often seen in tables you have created secondary indexes to optimize your queries right so users can create more indexes on other columns themselves so one way to do that is again create another b tree for the secondary index but now an important question rises what about the leaf page you are having the keys over here now primary index is having its own b tree secondary index is having its own b tree now for all the leaf pages will you store data inside the node because if it's doing because if you're doing that it's really terrible because you are you know storing a lot of duplication of data and also if an update to record happens you need to update all the indexes okay so sometimes it's favorable for us to not store the actual values inside the node but store pointers to the actual data and the actual data can reside in some other file which is generally called the heap file now heap file you can have your own way of how you write to the heap file most databases they use append only approach in which whatever data is coming they kind of append to this heap file okay so there will be duplicates inside the heap file and the last entry would be the winner of the update you can also do the overwriting kind of thing in which when you're writing new data to heap file you kind of first find if it exists in the heap file you kind of overwrite that particular bytes of data so in this fashion i hope you can understand how these b trees are working the final leaf pages are pointing to the actual data which is again in the hard disk okay so the complete b tree was in the hard disk you start with the root node based on your key you see whatever is the particular range you kind of perform three or four hops you finally reach the leaf page you find the key you perform a hop to the actual heap file you read the row and you return it okay similar process can be used for secondary indexes also you can have its own b trees and they can have their own pointers to the actual data now one other approach to do the same kind of thing is for primary index you can actually store the value not the basically pointer to actual data you can store the value inside the leaf page why because you can see that this is another hop this is another disk io operation you, you this actual data resides in some other physical address location so you need to perform the disk io over here which involves like the spinning of hard disk coming to the particular correct position so this takes some time sometimes you can't compromise that much to make another hop so that's why like if you talk about MySQL ImmunoDB, what it does it, it keeps the data in the leaf pages itself. And that's a cluster index, which is basically keep the data in leaf pages. And now you will say, okay, then this is duplication of data. No, because for the secondary index, you do not use a cluster index. Okay. So what was cluster index? It was keeping data in leaf pages. And 
there is only one cluster index allowed per database. So for secondary indexes, what you do is in the leaf pages, you store reference to the primary keys so that you don't do the data duplicacy. Okay. So this approach sometimes is not very useful because you have created the secondary index, but then you are again performing one more hop. So that's why you also have something known as covering index. So it what it says is we will not store the full data in the leaf page, but we might store few columns in the leaf pages of the index. Okay. So this is kind of a mix and match kind of thing. So I hope now you understand how B-trees work. Now, just to recap, indexes, their purpose is to help query faster. And there is a little overhead involved on the writes and in disk space because indexes utilize more disk space and this slow down writes a little bit because you're doing some certain extra operations to maintain all the mechanism of answering queries faster. We saw that there were log based approach to create indexes, which was like bit cask and LSM trees. The other approach was using page oriented, which was like B trees and MySQL InnoDB is an example for that. At this point, I also want to talk about multi-column indexes. So far we have only discussed like this is the key, this is the key. What if the key consists of more than one column? Because it might happen that you want to select all the hotels where the latitude is in certain range and longitude is in certain range. Now B trees, LSM trees, they are not capable of doing that. They can only give you like, okay, here are the records which are in the range 20 to 21. But then in the longitude, you need to again do the uh, entire scan of the data set returned from the previous index. And then, so basically it's not very optimized in answering this kind of thing. For that, we have R trees, which are not in the scope of this video, but these are spatial indexes and they help us answer these queries faster. Okay. So just wanted to mention that in both the approaches for creating indexes, both of them do not help us with spatial indexes, which are multi-column indexes. Also, I want to talk about in-memory databases. So for example, VoltDB, MemSQL, Oracle Timestamp, these are relational models, okay? So all the tables, foreign key references, everything. But these are a bit faster. Basically, these products claim they are faster because there is no encoding going on and it's entirely stored in data, in memory database. So there is no encoding required to store these structures inside disk, okay? Because in you have data structures in memory. You have tables, lists, arrays, Everything is there in memory, but you have to store this in the disk, right? So you need certain encoding because you can't directly store them like this. So you need certain encoding and we will talk about that in future videos. But because in-memory databases do not deal with disk at all, that's why they are kind of a little bit faster and you don't need, you can directly skip this encoding. Now it might raise a few questions that in-memory databases, what if the machine goes down? these are not durable and all those things well that is true also the mem in memory like also the ram capacity is very less than the physical disk space ram can be probably 100 gbs but the physical disk space can be in terabytes so it might someone might argue that we might not be able to hold a lot of data in these kind of databases that is true and that's why we have distributed data coming into picture in which you use horizontal scaling and distribute uh, or you can say you leverage the RAM of a variety or a group of machines or you can say your cluster so that you can store the entire data set. So that's why like if you have really terabytes of data, in-memory databases may not, make, uh, may not make sense. But this is again like a lot of data sets who are not very high. They are in a couple of GBs. In-memory databases are also a pretty good option because the performance is really good. So let's say we insert 123, then let's say four, then let's say five. And before I press insert, note that right now the degree is three or the branching factor is three, which means that it can only store three references or two keys inside a node. So if I try to do this, it should split as you can see, right? So now this is a self balanced tree. That's why we have a root page and then we have two leaf nodes. And you can see that this is B plus trees, not B trees. And the difference is that in B plus trees, you can also see the leaf pages are connected to each other. Okay. So since this is a kind of a binary search tree extension or modification or generalization, the leaf nodes are always sorted. And if you connect the first leaf no node with the another one through a pointer, 
it kind of creates a linked list again this is everything every page every node is in hard disk okay it's not in memory it's in hard disk okay and you create a linked list again in hard disk but the benefit is if you want to do a scan of keys like i want to find the key four and then i also want to scan the next five keys you don't need to perform you don't need to perform the hops from the root page to the next few leaf nodes you can simply do the scan in sequential manner you can go from one node to other node and since these are all in ascending order due to the binary search tree properties it's very powerful and that's why b plus trees are very like they are an optimization upon b trees and they're widely used as the indexing data structure in a lot of databases so now let's say i also insert 17 it goes to root node it seven oh like you can see how it's happening on the fly right it finds the leaf node it says okay i need to perform a split and it does that now let's say i insert six what do you think will happen it goes here six is here no problem now if i try to insert 10 now things will again become interesting 10 it goes here performs oops it's break again it breaks and now the level of the tree has increased right in practice this degree is in several hundreds and that's why the height of this tree is at max three or four levels in reality why because it's using a huge branching factor of 500 or close to several hundreds so i hope this made sense i could not show the deletion in the tutorial so let's also show that if i try to delete 10 what do you think will happen it first finds the leaf page deletes the entry and bam everything is cool now if i delete six the reverse should happen it should compact the tree and there you go so all the leaf nodes always stay at the same level and it always maintains this indexing balanced nature and it's so powerful like we don't have to manually create these indexes right like you have millions of keys and to perform indexing on them you kind of do multi-level indexing right because you have you need more indexes to actually use the index that you have created on the database so this is automatically doing that multi-level indexing for us that's the beauty of b-trees that a lot of people just don't understand they just understand okay this is insertion deletion but think about the beauty like what is it doing in just three to four hops even if there are millions of keys you are finally reaching to the leaf page just by doing three or four disk io operations that's the beauty of b trees and i hope now it's clear to you